Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Sharon Lees, director of the document, documentary short film, The Flag Makers. And Sharon, first of all, congratulations on making the shortlist for Oscar consideration. You're among 15 potential nominees for best documentary short. How does that feel? And what has that experience been like for you? Um, it is uh, humbling. Uh, I feel honored. And I'm also terrified. <laughs> so... Uh, this is very new territory for me. Uh, my co-director Cynthia Wade has been here before, but I have not. So uh, it's it's a whole new world, um, but it's great. What's terrifying? Why what why that emotion? Oh, because um, it's like what do, what do we do? What is expected right now? Like, what do I say? How do I answer these questions? Um, do, what does it mean for my career? You know, it's there's there there seems to be a lot at stake with it, and you know, I just want to keep it calm. <laughs> so, well, the film it's is about Eater Flag in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, where employees sew and ship out five million American flags a year. And what's so fascinating about this is right in Wisconsin, in the middle of America, is these employees are this incredible diverse group of locals, immigrants, refugees from all over the world. How did you hear about Eater Flag? And then how did you decide to ultimately make this documentary? Yeah, it is an, it's a magical place. And it's a place that's just so unexpected in terms of Oak Creek. And then to like see this bubble of America right in, inside that factory. Um, it actually started out, the film started out as a different film in Kansas City, where, where I live. And um, Cynthia and I had been talking about how we wanted to do something with immigrants because um, there was so much negative, um, so much, so much ne negative rhetoric about immigrants. And we wanted to uh, see what we could do about influencing that sentiment. So there was a program in Kansas City that had um, women teaching women um, to, to sew, and they're mostly immigrants and refugees. And at the end of that program, we were filming it, the end of a six week program, these women got jobs at uh, an American flag factory. And it was in Kansas City. And we were like, this is the story we need to pivot. And we were not able to get access to that factory. So we started a nationwide search. And we found this, uh, this place in Oak Creek, um, Eater Flag that um, once you walk in, it is so beautiful and so cinematic and all the different sounds and smells just converging just we were just charmed by it immediately and we knew that um having been there that once we walked out we would never look at the american flag the same way again first of all i was shocked at the actual flag making process i i would have never imagined how much actual hand sewing i mean these people are in stations sewing in stars what surprised you the most about just the first time you just walked into a flag making factory? It, the the magnitude of it, these large flags and the fabric and then and how many hands were actually touching each flag, because each flag is not just made by one person. They, you know, some people might do the stripes and some people do the stars, but they all have to work together. And the fact that they don't all speak the same language and there might be 12 to 15 different languages going on, but they manage to cooperate and um and put these put these enormous flags and smaller flags together yeah and it's interesting to because you talk to various subjects of people who work there and one is sugar ray he's a black man that works in the shipping department and he has a quote that i love from the movie he says you get the temperature of the country by what flags are displayed and that's true especially today whether it's a black lives matter flag or a pride flag or american confederate flags there's so much meaning behind what people are putting outside of their homes or places of business and he gets emotional because he doesn't he works in this factory but he won't put an american flag in his own front yard because he feels like his country doesn't love him back even though he loves his country so how do, he he gets very emotional how did you get so many people to become so vulnerable and open up to you with their stories on camera because he's just one of of many incredible stories in this project yeah i mean sugar ray is 
is amazing. And he made himself very vulnerable. Um, you know, I mean, as documentary filmmakers, this is the thing that we always want to do. We want to gain trust with our um, and have a relationship with with our subjects so that they can like they can go deep inside and tell us their most intimate thoughts. Um, and Sugar Ray, you know, we spent some time with him and talking to him and um getting to know him and letting him know that, uh, you know, we will only film what you want us to film and what you will allow us to film. And you have to uh, be willing to stand by those commitments. And um, Sugar Ray said he, he would talk and, um, you know, it was a very, there was a lot going on in the country, right, right there also in Wisconsin um, when, when we did that interview. Um, and so he, uh, he just bared his soul and we were so grateful that he would, he would speak to us um, and tell us, um, you know, his most intimate thoughts. You have footage and captured footage of these flag makers watching the January 6th insurrection where the flags are weaponized. That's powerful footage to watch for them to see flags that they made be turned into weapons like that. You know, how did you, how were you there to capture that in, in that moment? Uh, well, what's interesting too, was that was a time where we, uh, we were, we also were taking all kinds of COVID precautions and we had to shoot that through the window. <laughs> Uh, when Sugar Ray and his and his kids were watching watching the the television that day, and so we were just filming different things with him, and um, you know we said, "Is is this okay?" And he said, "It's it's fine." Um, and he really and we've talked to him, uh, you know, throughout this whole process of screening, and and he feels like it's very important for the country to see. Uh, through his eyes, what 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 he's watching. So um, you know, we're again, you know, always grateful to subjects who will allow you um, into their lives in that way. And Wisconsin's a very politically diverse state, and you know, someone else that you speak to is Barb, and she's been there for a while. She might be considered, you know, more conservative on on many things. She's a little frustrated that people aren't speaking English. Um, Despite all of that, they throw her this big retirement party and she's hugging all of these people from different countries that even though she has issues with, there's a love and a bond that they have. They're working all together. You know, this factory is like a microcosm of America and it, it's sort of showing, you know, what we should be. What do you hope that people get out of seeing things like like Barb and the relationship that she has with these other people that she does not necessarily see eye to eye with on all subjects. Yeah. I mean, Barb, Barb's beliefs belie the relationships that, that she forms at Eater Flag. And we felt that it was really important to um, have a character like that in, in the film, because it's really easy to dismiss other people who think differently than, than, than we think and hold beliefs that are different than ours. But there's a sense of humanity that you see in these people who think very differently and believe differently and get along and connect. And we think that that's an important message that you need to get through some of that that clutter um, to to be able to see the humanity and to see what people are really about. I mean, we're, if we're going to fix any of these things that we need to fix in the country, um, we see we need to start with seeing people as people and people with hearts and people who care. Um, and it's confusing and it's complicated. And you know, we want to see people as one dimensional, but it's just not that way. What is it about Eater Flag that attracts such a diverse workforce? Well, for one thing, uh, Eater is very proactive in uh, in seeking uh, a, di a diverse workforce. So that makes that happen. Also, it feels like it's um, when you're there, the, it's a very welcoming and an open and accepting environment. And it really feels like when you walk into those doors, you are walking into a bubble and you are looking at what the country could be. And that if people could just see each other as people that want to know each other and connect with each other and help each other, that maybe it could be a little better place. How long was this process from beginning to end? And how do you know when it's time to make that final cut and say, all right, let's, let's stop this. 
Yeah. So it was, uh, we filmed for three years. We had not expected to film for three years, um, but there was a little, you know, pandemic that, that got in the way, but it allowed us um, to um, stretch out the process so that we were able to get things that were very important that were happening in the country that we were able to put into the film. Um, I don't think you ever, there's never a point that you think a film is, is over. You just run out of time or money. <laughs> so in, in this instance, uh, we did have, um, we had deadlines that we needed to make. Um, though I will say that Nat Geo was great and they kept letting us, you know, take this further and further. Um, but, and we had actually finished the film, thought we had finished the film, which we edited for over a year with three different editors. We'd finished the film and then learned that Radisson was going back to Serbia and decided to reopen it because that was, we were, that was our ending. It was telling us that this is our ending. And she was the manager of, of the plan. And she was the one who was guiding us through and who had been there for, been there for 30 years and came to America following the American, trying to find the American dream and then decides to leave. Well, it's a powerful message in film and everyone can watch it right now. It's streaming on Hulu and Disney Plus. Sharon, congratulations on the film and best of luck. It was a pleasure to speak with you about the Flagmakers. Thank you so much.